In the previous video, we looked at parametric bootstrapping and I showed you a simple example of the parametric bootstrap. One of the key elements of parametric bootstrapping is that we make some assumptions about the form of the underlying population distribution. We're going to now consider non-parametric bootstrapping and as with most non-parametric methods, we reduce the number of conditions for valid inference, we're not going to make any assumptions about the underlying form of the population distribution. Let's review the basic non-parametric bootstrap method. We have a sample, we can calculate statistics from this sample and use those in order to estimate something about our population parameter but we actually don't start there. We start by taking samples from our samples, and we do this many times. So underneath these samples, we believe that there is an underlying population, and we're estimating it, but we're estimating it in the sense that we're taking samples from the population, bypassing the population itself, not actually making any estimates about that population other than to look at samples drawn from that population. We then take and calculate statistics for each of these samples, and from those statistics, we can calculate an empirical sampling distribution. Let's see this in action with a simple example. I'm going to start this example by drawing from a known population just as I did in my video on parametric bootstrapping. We don't do that in the real world of research. If the population is known, we're not going to research it. We're conducting the study because we want to know about the population. So what I'm doing now is very Monte Carlo type. That is, I'm temporarily assuming that I know the population just so that later I can see how my sample results worked in terms of estimating some parameters in this population. So let's select a sample from a normal population that has a mean of 60 and a standard deviation of 8. I'm going to randomly select 50 units. Let me do that. I have a sample now. I can see it here in my environment pane. Now we're going to erase our memories and forget about the population. That is, we're going to use this as though it were real research and we don't know the population parameters. And our sample will be used to make the best guesses about the population. I'm going to build a bootstrap sampling distribution for the mean and this is non-parametric bootstrapping so I do not need to guess at the underlying population distributional form as I did with parametric bootstrapping. Instead, I'm going to build the sampling distribution from repeated sampling. Sampling from where? If we don't have a population, where are we going to get our samples from? We're going to get our samples from the sample. We draw samples from our sample that are the same size as our sample. Wait a minute. Doesn't that mean every sample is going to be the same? Well, it would if we sampled without replacement, but we're going to sample with replacement. Thus, any observation in our sample is eligible to be selected multiple times. It could be selected two times or three or even ten times, although if we have a fairly large sample, that's unlikely. So we're going to do this many times, calculating the mean each time, and the result will be the sampling distribution of the mean. So let's go. All right, so here I'm going to take 10,000 samples. Each sample will be size 50. I've already drawn one sample, so when you're doing non-parametric bootstrapping, it's assumed that you've made an observation. You've made a number of observations. You've drawn a single sample. That's all you're going to draw, but you've got to draw a sample. You've got to start somewhere. You've got to bootstrap this. You can't just start with nothing. So we're going to use that one sample to bootstrap our many samples. So I'm going to take means from 1 to 10,000. I'm going to record those means. And notice the key element here is this bootstrap sample in which I'm sampling from my sample. I'm sampling size n, that is my sample size, which is currently 50. And I 
have to put in replace equals true because the default is to sample without replacement. But I'm going to sample with replacement and I'm going to store my means. Let's do it. All right, it's done. I now have an empirical sampling distribution of 10,000 means. Let's look at it. It looks like a normal distribution. Unlike the example I did for parametric bootstrapping, we did not make assumptions about the underlying distribution. We did not say it would be normal. So we wouldn't know to expect this except via the central limit theorem. Let's calculate our best point estimate of the population mean. Remember, putting our memories back in, remember it was really 60. We got 60.4, pretty close. Let's look at an estimate of standard error. 0.1.06 is our standard error. Now it's time for a confidence interval. First, we need to sort the means, which I'll do. For a 95% interval, we need to cut off 2.5% off of each end. I used 10,000 samples, so I need to cut off 250 off of each end. So I'm going to look at the interval of my sorted means going from 251 to 9,750. Let's go ahead and look at that. And that is 58.4 to 62.6. That's my 95% confidence interval. I'm 95% confident the population mean is between 58.36 and 62.56. Now, leaving the world of research and traveling into make-believe one more time, remember the original population I started with had a mean of 60, so I've captured the mean. We don't have to do this by hand. We can use a bootstrapping package. I'm going to use the boot library. Here's the original sample again. That's the one I'm going to use to bootstrap this. I need to create a function for my statistic, but unlike with par parametric bootstrapping, I don't need to generate the data. So I don't need to create a function for data generation because I'm going to sample from my sample. So the only function I need is this simple one here in which I'm going to calculate the mean from my sample and I'm going to index it with the number of samples. All right, we're ready to go. We don't have to indicate the type because the default is non-parametric bootstrapping. So I don't need to indicate the, the type here. I do need to pass it my sample, my original sample that I'm using to bootstrap. I am giving it my function. My stat is what I called the function. Remember, this could be for any statistic we choose. We're doing it for the mean. Now, the S type here is new. That means that in my function, I'm using an index. So the S type being I means I'm using an index. We could use other options, but I'm going to stick with this. So we're just going to use the simplest of options, S type equals I. I want to do this 10,000 times. Let me make sure that I have my function loaded in here. All right, the function's loaded. Now I'm ready to run this. And I have here my estimation of the mean is 60.5. Here's the difference between my estimated value and my mean of my sample, my original sample I used to start the bootstrapping. Here's my standard error. And let's get a confidence interval. I'm going to go ahead and get a basic confidence interval, meaning I'm going to cut off 2.5% on each side. And there's my interval from 58.33 to 62.55. If you watch the video on parametric bootstrapping, you'll notice that we obtain something very similar here, very similar results, except this time something important happened. We did not need to specify a population distribution or estimate population parameters. That sounds very non-parametric to me.